this dua of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam of that which the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam supplicated that oh allah bless us in the lands of sham and as i mentioned dimashq capital damascus is at the forefront of the area of sham and without a doubt this has manifested since early times the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent many companions the famous companion abu darda radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who lived there who taught there who taught in the great masjids of damascus great fuqaha and jurists have emerged from the bilad of sham from from the lands of syria and elsewhere and you know one of the scholars said in the 4th century in the 4th century when he came to the famous masjid we have the famous Jami al Umawi uh, in Damascus. He went there and he said that every pillar in that masjid that I saw, I saw a Shaykh teaching with students around him in the fourth century. This was how the area of Sham was, and specifically Damascus, Dimashq, and the famous masjid Jami al Umawi, which is present till today. Alhamdulillah, great scholars are present there, people teach there. Great scholars have come in, in, in that area, and specifically in Damascus. We've had great scholars under the regime and under the supervision of the famous Nuruddin Zangi, Rahimahullah wa anhu, the famous Amir of the Muslims. And his graves there, um, people like Imam Ibn Asakir, he's got a famous book, Tarikh of Dimashq, many volumes in Arabic where he mentions those people who came and lived and taught in Damascus. People like Hafiz al Mizzi, Imam Ibn Kathir, who has the famous uh, tafsir commentary of the Quran. Tafsir al-Quran al-Azim and we have the, the Mufassirun of the Quran like Ibn Kathir we have Muhaddithun like Ibn Asakir, Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali and we have great fuqaha, great jurists jurists who are from all schools of thought Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali was from the Hanbali Madhab we have great Maliki jurists who live there and the Shafi'i and the Hanafi Madhab is very well represented was represented and is still represented in Syria Great scholars, I mean, if you ask scholars and ulama and tulab and the students of knowledge anywhere in the, in the world, subcontinent or anywhere, who is the greatest authority recently in the Hanafi Madhab, whose book is considered to be the most authoritative work in the Hanafi school of thought, all of them will say that it's Imam Ibn Abidin, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. His book, Raddul Muhtar, famous book, commentary of Durrul Muhtar, written by Imam Al-Haskafi. Both these two Imams lived and taught in Damascus in Syria. Both are buried there in the famous graveyard, Al Babu Saghir. And, so, and this book, his book, Radul Muhtar, even in the subcontinent, is considered to be one of the most you know, authoritative books in the Hanafi Madhab. And also, if you move a lot away from Damascus, you go to Halab, people like um, Imam Al Qasani, who wrote Al Bada'i al Sana'i, a famous book in the Hanafi Madhab. Great scholars of the Hanafi Madhab and also the Shafi'i Madhab lived and taught in the area of Syria and in Sham. And even till today, Alhamdulillah, um, for those who don't know, I, I was privileged and honored to spend a couple of years in Syria where I studied. We have great scholars there present right now. We have people like Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Halabi, who is one of my teachers who I studied with, who still today teaches. He's in his 80s and he teaches books. The tafsir of Imam Al Qurtubi, Raddul Muhtar, which is in eight volumes daily. After Fajr, he comes, he teaches between Maghrib and Isha, he teaches students come and study by him. There are great scholars in the science of Tajweed and Qira'a, where the same Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, for example, students come and study by him, who study and memorize the Quran, read the, and make the recitation of the Quran, and he gives ijazah, and that ijazah goes all the way back. This is the ijazah in the Quran that you have you know, recited your Qur'an by this Shaykh who recited this Qur'an to his Shaykh, to his Shaykh, to his Shaykh going all the way back to, you know, through the medium of people like Imam Al-Jazari and many others to the companions of Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu all the way to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam through Jibreel alayhi salam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you have a full chain of the Qur'an every book that is taught is taught with a chain this is a speciality, not just hadith, but Quran. You pick up any book, Aqidat al Tahawiyah, for example, of Imam al Tahawi. It's a book that the teacher will teach you, and uh, he will give you a chain, a sanad, going back all the way to the author of the book. 
the Hanafi madhab people will have ijaza and isnads and chains of transmission that goes from them all the way back to Imam Muhammad to Abu Yusuf to Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu and from Imam Abu Hanifa we know the chain which Dr. Akram mentioned to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam so there is great blessing in that area till today of course it's not like how it was before but that's everywhere even in the subcontinent it's not how it was like before I will talk about the subcontinent as well inshallah before the next speaker but I've been told to talk about the both um, areas where alhamdulillah great knowledge lies the subcontinent as well as the, the lands of Sham and Syria. So this was this is where Imam Ibn Rajab al Hanbali was from, who wrote this book. He was originally from Baghdad and then he moved to Damascus and he taught there and he used to reside in an area teach where in an area where it's called the Masjid of Sheikh Mahyuddin ibn Arabi, the great Sheikh Al Akbar they call him. Even till today his masjid is there, his graves there, there's a you know a market they call Suq al Jumu'ah. It's called Suq al Jumu'ah because it opens on Friday. And there's a great masjid there which is Jami' al Hanabila which till today it's called Jami' al